To start things off, I want to start talking about the text editor we'll be using for this course. You're free to use any text editor you like, as long as it supports HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All three of these technologies play a major role in the D3 library, so your editor will need to support them. Usually the editor I recommend for web development is WebStorm by JetBrains. There's a specific reason why I recommend this editor. This is a premium editor, and if you can't afford it, then I provide an alternative at the end of this lecture. For now, let me show you why it's so useful. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a zip file that contains a simple HTML file. I want you to unzip this file anywhere in your system. Once you have it unzipped, I want you to open it up in your browser. You'll see that it's just a regular HTML document with the text saying, Hello. If you right-click anywhere on the page and select View Page Source, then you'll see a new tab open up with the original source code. As I stated earlier, you should have good knowledge of HTML and CSS, so you should be able to understand what this code does. There's nothing groundbreaking about this code. If you take a look at the URL bar, you'll see the full system path. For HTML and CSS, opening up a file like this is just fine. However, later in this course, your code will not work by simply opening up the files in the browser. This is because we'll be learning how to load data through external sources. For security reasons, most browsers will not allow this unless you're on a server. This forces us to set up a local server on our machines. Usually this is a pain to set up and setting up a server varies from language to language. Luckily, we won't have to mess with a single line of code related to web servers. The editor I recommend will automatically set up a server for you without having to touch a single line of code. This is great because we'll then be able to focus more on our code rather than the server code. Let's explore how that's done. If you don't have WebStorm, then that's fine. I'll provide an alternative in just a moment. Just keep watching. I'm going to start a WebStorm. Right now I have my HTML file opened up. On the menu above, I'm going to click on View. This will present us with an option to open in browser. You'll then see a list of browsers you can use. For this course, I'll be using Chrome. So I'm going to select this option, and then WebStorm will open up this file in the browser. This may take a while for some of you, since WebStorm boots up a server. Like before, we have the text hello being displayed to us. However, what's different is the URL. Taking a closer look, you'll see that WebStorm opened this from something called localhost. Localhost refers to your computer. It's telling your browser that this file that just opened up is coming from your computer and not some external server. Just like that, without having to write a single line of code, you now have a server. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes, but that doesn't matter. We only care about what's being displayed on the browser and that our code works. We'll leave the server stuff to the server guys. Something I want to highlight is that this will only work for HTML documents. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go back to my editor and I'm going to create a new file called test.js. You don't have to follow along as this is just an example. With this file opened up and appearing inside the main active editor, I'm going to select the view menu item again. You'll notice that the open in browser option is gone. This is because WebStorm is unable to generate a server for a JavaScript file. If you don't see the open in browser option, then chances are you don't have the HTML document opened up in the main active editor. This does happen from time to time, so it's good to know. Alright, so that's how you boot up a server from WebStorm. If you can't afford WebStorm, then that's perfectly fine. There's another alternative solution that doesn't require you to write a single line of code. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a link to a program called XAMPP. XAMPP is a program that allows you to create a server on a machine for free. It comes bundled with various programs that also help with web development. However, you don't need to be an expert in those technologies or even know how to use them. You can safely ignore those technologies. If you look right below, you'll see all the installers available. Download the one appropriate for your system and install it. Just go through the default installation settings. It's a normal program. Like anything else, you just click next and continue until it's finished installing. I won't be going through the installation since I already have it installed. Once you've installed it, you can open up a program called XAMPP Control Panel. It should look something like this. There are quite a few programs here, but the only one you need to use is called Apache. 
Apache will create and configure a server for you automatically. All you have to do is press start and it should boot up. You may get a message saying that this program requires permission to boot up a server. Just say yes so XM can do its thing. Apache should turn green indicating that the program is now working. If you don't see it turn green, then chances are that it failed. In this case, you'll need to look at this log below to see the error. You'll need to message the Apache Friends site and provide them this log so they can assist you debugging the error. If your server is ready, then you can press this button called Admin that will open up a new tab in your browser. It'll open up that local host you saw earlier. You may see a welcome message from XAMPP, which is fine. I currently don't because I deleted those files. The welcome message is something you can safely delete and ignore for this course. Let me show you how to do that. Go back to the XAMPP control panel and search for the button called Explorer. It should be this button on the side with this folder icon. Click on it. This will open up the file explorer on your machine. There are a lot of folders here, but as usual you can safely ignore a lot of them. These files just help you create a server on your machine. The only folder we care about is the one called htdocs. htdocs is short for hypertext documents. I want you to go into this folder and you should see a couple of files. You may have different files than I do because I deleted those and created some new ones. I actually use XAMPP often for web development. Anyway, you can delete every single default file you see in this folder as you don't need them. They're usually just files to help you get started with XAMPP. I want you to grab that index file you unzipped earlier and place it inside this folder. I'm going to do that now. Alright, so I just placed the file inside this folder as you can see here. I'm going to refresh the localhost page again and you should now see the documents appearing like so. Just like that, you have your very own server. You don't have to write a single line of server logic as it's taken care of for you by XAMPP. To reiterate, D3 is a client-side library, so you don't actually need a server. However, we'll be requesting data from external sources, which does require a server, or else the browser will throw an error. Anyway, now that you have a server, you can then edit the files in any editor you like. It is now required to use WebStorm. For this course, I'll be using WebStorm's built-in server because it's more convenient. If you're using XAMPP, then you'll need to place all your files inside this htdocs folder. I do recommend you organize your files inside folders as we'll be working with quite a few projects. Let me show you how to access files from different folders. It's quite simple. I'm going to create a folder named example, then I'm going to drag and drop the index.html file inside this folder. Once you have that set up, you can then go back to localhost and change the URL to localhost slash example. You should still be able to see the message like before. Alright, that does it for now. I'll see you in the next lecture.